Hello. I'm going to be talking about women's toilets and the Barbican. And although I suppose most of you might know what a women's toilet is, some of you might not know what the Barbican is. So don't worry, I'll tell you. Also, I know that over half of the people watching this channel comprises men. So it stands to reason that a, uh, a hefty proportion of you watching this might think a piece about women's toilets or indeed the Barbican would have nothing to do with you. So I hope you have enough trust in me to believe me when I tell you that it does have something to do with you and perhaps you'll indulge me and watch for a little longer. Um, in any case, it's not so much the toilets I'm going to be talking about as the issues of gender and sex wokeness and groupthink. And this was all started by a tweet from a journalist called Sophie Corcoran. I'm not worried about giving her name. I, I often do redact such things. But in this case, as I said, she's a journalist and in any case would be easily traceable just from the tweet I'm going to read. But I'm not going to read that before I tell you about the Barbican so that you have some background. The Barbican was a huge post-war project. It was built over an area of London which goes right back to its original use, as, as its name might suggest, as the main fort of Roman London. Of course, it had been built over, you know, during over many years, in bits and pieces, and by subsequent generations, until World War II bombing completely flattened the area, or mostly flattened the area. So in the late 1960s, a scheme was begun to make use of this devastated inner London land. Was it there to house the poor and dispossessed? Not bloody likely. It's far too close to the City of London and all its financial institutions. This was, from the start, a huge complex intended for the upper middles and professionals. And it turned out to be so. An address in the Barbican was a definitive stamp of establishment membership, as definitive as would have been a, a country estate a hundred years before. But wait, as they say, there's more. It wasn't merely going to provide bread for the, well, more well-heeled masses, but circuses as well. The complex contains, or stands right next to, now, where's that list? Ah, the Barbican Arts Centre, that's spelt C-E-N-T-R-E -E for you Yanks, yep, uh, the Arts Centre, the Museum of London, the Guildhall School of Music and Drama, a public library, the City of London School for Girls, and originally there was a YMCA there in a nod to social responsibility, but it didn't last long and it's not there any longer. I suppose it was attracting the wrong sort of lower class people. Whatever, you could spend your entire life commuting between your Barbican flat and the theatres and the multitude of fashionable cafes and never leave the place. I haven't lived there, um, but I have visited there. I've been to the theatre there. And I imagine it would be a bit like living in a sort of upmarket jail, uh, an image which, to my mind, is reinforced by the style of the architecture, which again, to my mind, resembles solid concrete poured over Lego bricks. It's a hideously ugly environment, which no amount of extra tree and tub planting can adequately disguise, especially on a rainy day. Uh, I found a, uh, you know, I, I, I did some research. I wish this would stay put. I found a nice picture of one of the plazas uh, and it was taken, of course, on a sunny day. But just try and imagine it in the winter with rain falling and no one there under those umbrellas. And, of course, the rain staining all that unfinished concrete, you know, in dark streaks. 
the architectural style, by the way, is described as brutalist, and that's from the people who actually approve of it. My description for it is zombieist. Uh, that is, it's architecture without soul and brought to life by the magic of trendy feverishness. Well, that's the Barbican. And I've gone into such an extensive description for a particular reason. You see, the Barbican would have a particular sort of population by virtue of some sort of selective winnowing. That is, it wouldn't have any poor families and there would be fewer families with children, especially in the higher floors of the high rises. I mean, council estates have high rises and you get families with children on the 12th and 14th floors, but that's only because that's where they've been assigned. The Barbican is a place where people choose to be and not many families with children would choose to be on the 14th floor. It's much nicer when you're nearer the gardens. And so there'd be a greater proportion of the more artsy and establishment types who'd want to be there for the theatres uh, and the other facilities. At least that was my guess. So, as I said, before I started making this video, I did a little research on the population of the Barbican, Barbican and I found a post by one of the young families who moved there. And the person who wrote this said she knew at least 25 other families with young children. It's a huge complex and she knew only 25 other families. So that gave me an idea straight off. Anyway, the wife said her father had, and I'm not going to be specific, but he'd run a famous performing establishment. So she knew the Barbican from childhood and she'd started off with her husband in a small Barbican flat and then they'd moved into progressively larger ones as their family grew and their needs expanded. But this was all within the Barbican. I'm sure you get the idea. Such a setup would tend to select for people of a certain type uh, and a certain groupthink as well. I, I'm sure, for example, that if she ever steps away from her artsy neighbours' attitudes on certain trendy issues, uh, the likelihood is that the atmosphere would become so unpleasant for her, she'd end up taking her family out of the Barbican altogether and, and moving to some, I don't know what, village in the Cotswolds and thus make room for a, a more compliantly woke replacement. It should therefore not be a particular surprise that the consanguinous attitudes of the Barbic Barbican uh, I'm having trouble pronouncing that word, aren't I? Uh, of the Barbican might breed something like this. And here's the tweet I promised you from, as I said before, Sophie Corcoran. The toilet options in the Barbican are male, disabled and gender neutral. No female toilets. Tell me again that women aren't being purposefully erased. I wonder how many of the Barbican residents would dare publicly to challenge the categories listed on those toilets. By the way, I responded to Corcoran's tweet with a tweet of my own. If you follow me on Twitter, and you should because that's one of the platforms upon which I upload notification of new videos. Anyway, if you follow me on Twitter, then you'll have seen it. If not, then here it is. I have to point something out, Sophie. For years, most public toilets have been male and then female disabled baby changing all in one place. Women, and I, I have spoken about this to friends, but of course you can't uh, be nasty about disabled people giving facilities, can you? So I felt like a bit of a heel for making a fuss about it. But, um, well, hang on. Women have accepted for years that our facilities are so unimportant as to be multi-purpose. This gender thing didn't come out of nowhere. 
Indeed, I don't think it did. So, that's my tweet. I am Granny Opterix. I am to be found on YouTube, Rumble, BitChute and Minds. As I said, I notify, because YouTube isn't that good about notifying people, I always either tweet, gab or parlour a message telling you I've uploaded a new video. So you should subscribe to one of those platforms and you'll never miss one of my brilliant outpourings. OK, there you are. Uh, please click that like, support the channel and, um, and share. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. OK, till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opterix design or Granbo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.